on today's show. Mercedes-Benz walks the walk to prove its EQXX concept can travel 1,000 kilometers per charge. Elon Musk tells a TED audience that he wishes that only he and J.B. Straubel had co-founded Tesla, and a study sponsored by Kia thinks it has the key to getting maximum range out of your electric car. Listening to classical music. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in New Zealand. Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me. When an automaker unveils a new concept car at an auto show, there is zero guarantee that said concept car, even if it has some form of drivetrain, is actually capable of being driven in the real world. But this week, we learned that one recent concept car from Mercedes-Benz, the Vision EQXX, is not only road legal, but capable of living up to the claims made of it when it was revealed earlier this year. A range in excess of 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles. The car, which previews a new production model from the company, was fully charged before having its charge port door sealed under scrutiny from an independent test organization. It then spent 12 hours and two minutes on the road, averaging normal road speeds and covering 626 miles, 1,008 kilometers in that time. It averaged 8.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, or 7.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Wowee! In the past few weeks, we've been following with interest as numerous Ford executives have shared their experiences with the last of the production validation F-150 Lightnings to roll off the production line. And now, Ford has announced the official start of deliveries in just two weeks' time. In a new teaser video shared to social media and press portals, Ford announced a special event will take place on April 26 at its REVC, or Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Detroit, where the F-150 Lightning will be made. Some early Ford reservation holders are expected to attend, and we're hoping to cover the event too. As some of you might know, I am a reservation holder for the F-150 Lightning, and our team crew vehicle is expected to be made in a few weeks. So I'm going to admit, we're all a little excited here at the channel. This week, the TED conference took place in Vancouver, Canada, and as usual, there were plenty of high-profile attendees and speakers, including Bill Gates and Elon Musk. And in the same week that Elon Musk made a sudden hostile takeover bid for Twitter under the auspice of turning it into a platform where freedom of speech is placed above everything else, regardless of what's being said is true or false, Musk took to the stage in what was quite the candid appearance. Plenty were said, there's a great article on Wired if you're interested, but what got our attention in the EV world was Musk talking about a regret from the early days of Tesla. While history records that Musk didn't join Tesla until a year after its founding, Musk said on stage that he wished it was just he and J.B. Straubel alone who had started the company. It shows Musk is still very much aggravated by a past court ruling which lists Tesla as having five co-founders. Toyota has officially priced its BZ4X crossover ahead of a US market launch this spring. Based on an all-new platform shared with the Subaru Solterra, the BZ4X crossover is Toyota's first all-electric vehicle since the limited production IQ EV, or Scion EV as it was known in North America, and the second-generation Toyota RAV4 EV. Priced from $43,215 including mandatory fees, it has an EPA-approved range of 252 miles, 405 kilometers for the front-wheel drive variant, and 228 miles, 360 67 kilometers for the all-wheel drive variant. While priced competitively, the BZ4X will be at a disadvantage against some of its similarly priced rivals, since Toyota has just hit its 200,000 plug-in vehicle incentive limit as defined by the US federal tax code. This means the $7,500 tax credit for buying a Toyota EV will be cut in half by the start of October. 
electric bus company and drivetrain specialist Proterra has long been one of the leaders of the electric bus space, with its vehicles popping up on city fleets around North America. But this week it unveiled a brand new variant of its most popular ZX5 transit bus, the ZX5 Max, that's capable of more than 300 miles in service. To date the company has offered multiple choices of battery capacities for its transit vehicles and the ZX5 is no different, with the 35 and 40 foot versions of the ZX5 being offered in 450 kilowatt hour battery pack or 675 kilowatt hour battery pack. They can now be specced with up to 492 kilowatt hours and 738 kilowatt hours respectively. This means its electric buses are now capable of escaping busy urban routes and going suburban and maybe even rural too. And that means fewer diesel buses. We've excitedly been covering the progress of Swedish Kenyan technology firm Opibus for several years now, documenting its lineup of electric buses, safari vehicles, and motorcycles. But this week, the company completed a successful rebranding, becoming Rome. It's a move that the company's founders say brings the firm closer to realizing its dreams of providing electric mobility and energy solutions for Africa. It will see the company split into four distinct units. Rome's electric conversion of safari, utility, and mining vehicles will become Muse, while its in house charging network will be named Rome Charging. Meanwhile, Rome Energy will of course focus on energy system solutions and renewable energy generation, while Rome Motorcycles will focus on designing and building electric motorcycles specifically for life in Africa. Here's wishing the team all the best as Rome starts a brand new chapter in its life. Vietnamese startup Vinfast may be well known in its home nation, but it wasn't until late last year that it burst onto the global market with the promise of bringing the VF8 and VF9 electric vehicles to market in North America. Since then, the company hasn't disclosed much, save for announcing a location for its first US production facility last week. This week, it announced two interesting things. First, a breakdown of pricing for its two electric vehicles, and second, a deal with Electrify America for free charging. The VF8 will start from $40,700 US dollars, while the VF9 will start from $55,500 US dollars. That might sound like a good deal, but this doesn't include a mandatory battery pricing system, which could add upwards of a few grand to your ownership costs per year. As for the Electrify America deal, you'll get a discount on membership and two free charging sessions when you buy a VinFast EV. That's right, two. Kia has officially revealed details for the refreshed second generation 2023 Kia Nero EV this week. Along with some interesting tweaks to its design, it picks up some new tricks from its younger sibling, the EV6. Losing its rear quarter panel window and gaining a new rear vertical light cluster, the Nero EV also gets a new front end complete with redesigned lights, grille, and bonnet. And under that new bonnet, you'll get the same small storage space frunk as found in the North American EV6. The aftermarket E Nero Frunk you can buy for the original E Nero is still larger, though, I think. And also, the charge port door on this new model gets moved to the center of the vehicle's nose. Inside, it gets the same dash as the EV6, which actually looks pretty darn sharp. But what's most important, other than a slight bump in range and increase to 85 kilowatt DC quick charging capability, is the optional inclusion of vehicle to load, meaning you can do what Kate Walton Elliott did with the EV6 and go camping with it. We're hoping to review one as soon as we can. The poster child of the EV supercar world, the incredible multi-million dollar Rimac Nevera, has officially completed the last of its winter testing ahead of its planned customer deliveries this spring. As is usually the case, Rimac has furnished us with some glorious video footage of the car power sliding on icy test tracks, and according to the company CEO, Mate Rimac, the car performed exceptionally well in temperatures down to minus 15 degrees Celsius, 5 degrees Fahrenheit. With 120 kilowatt hour 69 60 cell battery pack, a sprint time of 1.85 seconds, and a 0 to 100 miles per hour that's 161 kilometers per hour time of 4.3 seconds, the Nevera and its 1.4 megawatt drivetrain are unlikely to be driven in anger in the real world on roads like those it just tested on. But it's a real testament to Rimatz's engineering prowess that a car that powerful can behave that gracefully in ice and snow.
One of the biggest criticisms of electric vehicles today is that they often use cobalt in their battery packs, a metal that can actually improve battery performance, but isn't always sourced ethically and responsibly, and in some cases can be traced back to slave and child labor in Africa. It's for this reason and many others that there's a race to develop cobalt-free cells for EVs, and why some companies like Tesla already make cobalt-free batteries for some of their vehicles. Now there's a new company to add to the list, New Zealand firm Ubico. It specializes in off-road capable all-wheel drive two and four wheelers for use on farms, in recreational settings, and in military applications. And it's just announced a new partnership with battery specialist Chemex to develop a sustainable, ultra-safe, high energy battery pack that's cobalt free. The company says current cobalt free chemistries aren't energy dense enough for its applications, but it says that Chemex, which uses AI to design new cell chemistries, has already cracked the code for sustainable, high energy, cobalt free cylindrical cells. We'll be watching this one very carefully and we'll keep you up to date with any progress from this Kiwi firm. Volkswagen's MEB platform, aka its modular toolkit, was designed from the ground up to power a variety of different vehicle designs and segments, as well as offer a range of different drivetrain and battery pack choices. It currently underpins vehicles from Volkswagen like the ID3 through ID6, Audi models like the Q4 e-tron, and vehicles from other VAG brands like Škoda and Seat. But to date, the largest capacity battery pack offered by any of those vehicles is 77 usable kilowatt hours. This results in some usable but not range-topping performance across all models that use the MEB platform. But this week, Volkswagen announced it's expanding its MEB platform to include a larger capacity battery pack capable of up to 700 kilometers, 435 miles, on the optimistic WLTP test cycle, as well as offer up to 200 kilowatts of DC quick charging capability. As usual, when we know more, we will share. And finally, what do you listen to when you're driving your EV? If indeed you listen to anything at all? I'll listen to anything from EDM through to jazz and classical, and anything from NPR through to a good audiobook. I'm currently halfway through the Expeditionary Force series right now. But a study sponsored by Kia now suggests that if you want maximum EV range from your car, there's only one logical choice classical music. It examined the impact that music can have on your driving style and concluded that if you want the very best range per charge, you should be listening to something classical rather than any other genre. To be honest though, this is hardly surprising. I mean, cows on our farm that were exposed to classical music produced more milk than those that were exposed to something else. And as a former professional classical oboist, I can tell you that the right classical music makes me gooey. Thomas Tallis's Speminalium, anyone? But to be honest, when I was at music college, I also specialized in contemporary music. I will link to some of the recordings I made below, and you can let me know if my performances are chill or not. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch, and when you do, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. If you haven't already watched Gavin's incredible review of the Tesla Model 3, make sure you do that right now. But I will be back next week with more awesome content. So until then, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kagite. See you next time.